Hello, this is Rizorad from Radicad. In this video, I want to talk about one of the patterns in uh, dynamic role-level security in Power BI, which is about when you have a hierarchy, um, like for example, uh, I'm reporting to someone, that person reports to someone else. Uh, and within this hierarchy, when people log in, they want to see uh, the entire tree underneath them in the organizational hierarchy. So everyone see their own data, plus anyone who is under the tree of the organization. I have explained previously another simpler version of it, which managers see everyone's data and everyone see their own data. Uh, but a more practical way of doing that is through the organization hierarchy so every manager see the three of them uh, so let's go and have a look at it how this is going to work I'm going to build the entire example for you and you can see how this is going to work let's jump into it So when you want to build this uh, hierarchy scenario, um, usually you have a table that has the user information and uh, like who is the manager of that user. So you need to somehow parse that data and information. Now I have a separate video uh, with the details of how do we parse that. I still go through some, uh, some of those steps to parse that organizational data, uh, but I wouldn't go deep into those functions. Uh, you can go and check out the other video about that if you want. Um, so let's jump and see how this is going to work. So I'll go to my screen here and I'm going to show you this Power BI solution that is already built. So this is the final outcome we want to get to and then I'll show you how to build it. So let's say I have these two tables. I have a user table uh, and uh, the sales table. In the user table, we have like who is manager of what. Uh, and then this table filters the sales table. And when people log in, they want to see um, their data plus everyone under their hierarchy. So here, for example, you see this is the organizational hierarchy. Uh, this means that if someone like Lindsay log in, she should see only her own data. If Amy logs in, Amy should see Lindsay and Amy. If I log in, Reza log in, Reza should see all of these four people. Um, and uh, you can see that this is working at the moment like this. So when I focus on like the login user, I would see only my entire tree. So I'm going to show you how this is built. So let's go into a new Power BI model. This is the Power BI model that I have. Um, and in this Power BI model, I have uh, exactly the same thing. So same tables, user table, sales transaction table. I'll show you the data of these tables. This is the user table, as you see. Uh, so we have the ID of the user, the name of the user, and the manager ID. So these two, are, um, two columns are important because that is how <clears throat> you would determine who is manager of what. Like for example, Lindsay ID number eight, manager of that is number five, which goes back to another record in the same table, number five. And you see it's Amy, Amy's manager is number one, which goes back to another record. And this can go for as many as levels you want. Sometimes it's three levels, sometimes it's five levels. Um, 10 levels, you never know. Uh, so we usually when we want to do this parsing, parsing of the organizational hierarchy, we use uh, some functions, parent-child functions, um, which are in the category of path functions. As I said, there's a separate video about that I have recorded. I just go and use it here. Um, so I'm going to create a new column in this example. Uh, let's say this column is going to give me the entire hierarchy. Um, this function is quite easy to use. The column name, I would call it path. And in this column, I'm using the path function. Path function just asks for the ID. In this case, it would be the ID column and then the parent ID, which would be the manager ID. So just using something like this is good enough to give you the entire tree. You see how simple it is and it gives me the entire path. So for example, it for Lindsay, it tells me like you should read it from uh, from right to left. Uh, I'm trying to do drawing a little bit better. Uh, so you see it that it is like this. So this is the ID of the current record, eight, then manager of that, the first manager, five, then the manager on top of it. And if it is like more than that, you would have like 10, uh, and they are all uh, separated with this vertical bars or pipe, whatever you might call it. It, this is like a text. You can go and parse the text. However, there are functions that you can use that would check if there's an ID containing in there or not, right? So those are quite simple uh, to use. 
Um, now the function that we use for this to check if uh, if any of these contains something or not is called path contains. So our process in this dynamic role level security would be something like this. First, we find out who logged into the system, right? For example, Reza logged in or Layla logged in, depending on uh, who logged in, and we can get that using user principal name uh, function, which I explained that in previous dynamic role level security basic videos. Once you find that out, you go and find out what is the ID of that person. So for example, let's say Reza logged in, we go and find out the ID of Reza. Once we find that, we'll go and find all the records in the path that has that ID somewhere. It may not be always the first item, it might be the third item, it might be the last item. And we use path contains to check that. So really simple process. I'm going to build this through a uh, measure first so that you get an idea of how this looks like. I'll go and create a new measure here. So this measure, I'll start with first who logged into the system. Let's say we use user principal name to get who logged into the system. Um, so user principal name give, give me who logged into the system. I just put that in a card visual just so that you can see what it looks like. So adding a uh, card visual with this measure in it, right? So this is my login. At the moment I logged in using the um, like a local username. If I push this in the website or publish this into the Power BI website or Fabric website, you'll see this would be your Power BI account like reza.radicap.com or whatever. So this is find out who logged into the system. After I find out who logged into the system, I use a simple function to get the ID of that person. And there are many different functions you can use for that. One of them is uh, lookup value, for example. So I can say lookup value, the column that I want is the ID column from the user table. Uh, the column that I'm searching for is their email and the value I'm searching for is this user principal name. So altogether, this is basically giving me the ID of the person logged in. Um, if you come from SQL background, reading this is more like uh, select ID from the user table where email is equal to user principal name, right? So simple function to, to work with. Now, if I go here, I should see, yeah, here it is. This is my ID, right? Uh, so, so far we have done this. We found out who logged into the system, what is their ID. So if I come back here, like we know, for example, the ID is one. Now we should go and find all the records with the ID of one. And that is that part is actually the, the simple part of it. For that part, I'll go and write this inside the inside the manage roles because that is the main part we want to do that. So I'll go inside the manage roles. Uh, and here I would add a new role. This is where you apply your dynamic role of security configuration. So in here, I would add one role, user. And then in the user table, I want to apply this on the user table on the column, um, um, the path column. So I'll go to the DAX editor. Now what we want here is the path column within the user table to contain all of those, um, and uh, not all of those, the ID that we have already here. So, so for that, we use a function called path contains, right? So in the path contains column, we say, well, this is the path column and what value this should contain. This is that lookup value that we have, right? So this lookup value is the input of that. And then I close the path contain. So the expression would be something like this, not really complicated. So I'm saying that th this path column should contain this value. And that is the ID of the person logged in, right? So when it contains it, it will show everything for that, right? So I'll save this and that's pretty much all we need to do. Now I'm going to put a hierarchy here um, just so that you can see what this looks like. Now I didn't really put a uh, manager hierarchy so that you can see it. I'm going to do that very quickly as well. And this part is not needed for the dynamic role level security to work, but it is a good way to visualize thing. So I'm going to uh, add a new column in here, uh, which would be let's say um, the manager level one, manager level two, all of those kind of things. So let's go and add a new column. And I would call it level one. 
And this is going to be, well, I want the path item. As I said, I explained about these functions a little bit um, earlier in a different video, so go and check it. So the path column in here, and I want the item one as an integer. Uh, this gives me the ID of the, of the first level manager. Uh, and then I would use that inside the lookup value to get the name of that person, right? So here I would put it inside lookup value and I say, well, give me the name field where the ID matches this path height, right? Uh, again, I repeat this part that this is not needed for rollable security to work. The rollable security was that rule that I just put there. This is for more like visualizing things so that you can see better. Now I would do exactly this for one more column as well. Uh, and this part, if you are doing uh, like the columns for visualization, this part is uh, is not dynamic, right? Whereas the dynamic role of security itself is dynamic here. Uh, for adding those manager levels and things like that, you need to actually add these as columns separately. So you see that I'm adding three, three columns for the three different levels of this. So this is done. I'm going to add that inside the hierarchy, um, like as a hierarchy inside my slicer, level one, level two, and level three, right? So basically this looks like this. Uh, don't worry about the blank values at the moment. There are ways that you can get rid of those blank values as well. So now if I want to test it, so you see at the moment this shows everything. I have applied my role level security setup. If I go to view role and if I say I want to see this as a user, this would filter only for Reza and the records for Reza. So one more time how this works. This is all based on this, uh, this expression, which is not really complicated expression. In this expression, first we find out who logged into the system, user principal name, then we'll go and find out, sorry, this bit. We'll go and find out what is the ID of the person logged into the system. And then the path contains is a really wonderful function which would help us to find out which records in that um, path column has that ID. So before this, you'll need to have this path column added inside your table like the way that I added it. Uh, all other columns, they are not needed for the role level security work. I've just added them because I wanted to have a visual way of presenting things inside my reports. This is the main column you'll need in here. Um, so back to, um, back to a wrap up in here. Uh, so role level security, dynamic role level security can be sometimes challenging. Um, and uh, this is, was not the most challenging role level security configuration, but this is one of the most common setups that uh, many organizations need to have. You usually have this organizational hierarchy and you want people to see their own data plus everyone in their organizational tree. And you've seen that how simple it is uh, to build that. All of these codes, examples, and things like that are in my blog, which the link to that is down in the description below. If you like this video, go ahead and subscribe into our YouTube channel. We have weekly videos on Power BI and Microsoft Fabric. Until the next video, bye.